G'day and welcome to a uh, direct variation video. Direct variation involves a relationship between two variables whereby as one variable or one item increases the other increases. So an example here is if you drive for longer, if the time that you're driving increases then the distance that you will travel increases as well. So if you drive for five hours instead of two hours uh, the distance that you travel might likely go to from 200 kilometers to 500 kilometers. So they're both going to increase. They're both going in the same direction there. Now the other way you get a direct variation between two items is where one variable decreases while the other one decreases. So uh, here's an example. Uh, if I'm on a diet, as my food intake decreases across the weeks and months, my waste measurement hopefully will decrease as well. So if you decrease something, if you cut your food intake, then uh, your waste measurement might decrease as well. Although sometimes diets aren't all that predictable are they? <laughs> okay, direct variation. There are different ways to describe direct variation questions and so you may have to read very carefully. There's a few different varieties of ways that they express themselves and letters are used to represent the two variables. Most of the time we just use X and Y to represent the two variables or A and B or M and N and that sort of thing. But every now and again you get a question that is based on real life and you can use things like D for distance or T for time or N for number of people or P for people or whatever uh, and that helps us understand what we're doing as well. Okay, so the ways we indicate direct variation in a question, the most uh, common way they say it is A varies as B. So they'll, that, that will mean that it's a direct variation. They could say A varies directly with B and leave no doubt that it's a direct variation. And another way of saying the same thing is uh, that A is proportional to B. So they all three of those uh, varieties of ways indicate a direct variation in the question. And the letter K is always used in these questions to describe the relationship between the two variables. I like to think of uh, driving a car and the relationship between how long I drive and how far I go. And so I like to think of the letter K as the thing that relates how far I go depending on how long I drive. So if I'm driving at 60 kilometers an hour, uh, the relationship between how long I drive and how far I go will be based on that 60 kilometers an hour. Uh, if I'm driving a bit faster and I'm driving at 80 kilometers an hour, it'll still be describing the relationship between how long I drive and how far I go, but it'll be a slightly different relationship. So I like to think of K as the speed of the car, to just uh, keep that in my mind. But we'll see plenty of examples. And that K is called the constant of variation. It's the number that describes the relationship between the two items we're discussing. So there's uh, some basic formulae. The, the most common basic formula if you're talking about A varies as B, we say A equals KB. Now if we've got uh, Y varies as X, we sometimes say Y equals KX. That's another common version of the direct uh, variation formula. But we'll see it in an example and you'll get to know how this works. But if you're looking at direct variation, you have the A and the K and the B all on the one line and the K is multiplying by the B. We'll get to know that as we go through an example. There are some slight uh, different versions of that as well. If you read the question, and you really need to read the question carefully here because it's easy to miss a word or two. If you have a question that says A varies as the square of B, then you can pick that the direct variation basic formula goes from A equals KB. See, I've got the square of B there. So this basic formula that we'll have to apply to the start of this question is A equals KB squared because uh, we've got the square of B. So that uh, makes a bit of sense there. And if sometimes they say A varies as the cube of B, still a direct variation, but we'd have A equals KB cubed. So if you miss those words but because you're reading too quickly uh, when you read the question, that's going to make a big difference and uh, it's unlikely that you'll get the question right if you don't base the whole question on the correct basic formula there. But well, things will become clearer as we see a few examples. This is a basic example here. Y varies as X, which kind of indicates it's a direct variation, even though it didn't say it. 
uh, and they uh, give us some values here to work with. They say if y equals 86 when x equals 12, find y when x equals 26. Now that's pretty confusing when you start off, but I've got a whole bunch of steps here that will follow every time. So let's uh, check out the steps. Step 1 I'm going to put in, it's not relevant in this particular case, but we can sometimes in the examples assign a letter to each variable, like I described before, t for time or n for number or something like that. This question has already given us x and y, they've already uh, assigned a letter to each variable, so we won't have to worry about step 1 in this case, but we'll see it in a future video. Step 2, write the basic formula, and the basic formula is y equals kx. And um, we've got y and x in this question, so we'll stick to that basic formula. So we'll uh, apply that directly there. We won't have to change it for different letters. But uh, So that's our step two, write the basic formula. Now we look to sub in a pair of values. Now it's important that we read this question in a certain way. They said y, equal, y varies as x. Now can you see that this is in, in kind of like set in the one breath here? If y equals 86 when x equals 12, we always get a pair of values that are kind of phrased in the one uh, sentence, one part of the sentence. So if y equals 86 when x equals 12, and then you might think to pause, find y when x equals 26 as a sort of a separate thought. So you can see there's a relationship uh, between uh, those two numbers there. I call that the pair of values. You'll find that in every one of these questions. So we're going to sub that pair of values in to uh, straight underneath the basic formula here. So y is 86, it'll go where the y is, and uh, x is 12, so we'll put the 12 there, and that'll give us two out of the three values from the basic formula, which is going to be pretty handy. So if we put the 86 under where the y is, because y is supposed to equal 86 from the question, and if we put a 12 where the x is, because x is supposed to equal 12 from the question, We've uh, done most of our work for us, <laughs> uh, our, our, and then we're going to use that to find what k is. So our next step is to get k on its own there. So we're going to solve the equation, or get, get k on its own, to find the value of k. Now the way to do that, you can see that uh, k is multiplying, or beside 12, so it's multiplying there. There's a little invisible multiply sign there. So what do you think we have to do to both sides to get k on its own? We have to do the opposite of multiplying by 12, so let's divide by 12 on both sides there. We'll divide by 12, and divide by 12. On this right-hand side, Multiplying by 12 and dividing by 12 will cancel each other out nicely, leaving us with k on its own, and 86 divided by 12 on the left-hand side. So that's just a basic one-step equation solving there. And we get k equals 7. 12 goes into 86 seven times. Check it on your calculator. And as I said, these cancel out here, leaving us with k. Now if 7 equals k, we'll just switch that around to get k on the left-hand side. k equals 7. No, no dramas there. So we've found the value of k. So really, we've cracked the code for what the relationship number, that constant of variation we call it, we've cracked, uh, we, we've sorted out what that value is by having a look at the first pair of values. All right, now what, what we're going to do now is sub in k to the original basic formula to improve it. If we know what k is up here, if we know that's a certain number, it will improve the uh, information we have by putting that number in instead of the k. So instead of the k, we're going to put that 7. So we've got y equaling 7 times whatever x is. That's going to help a lot. Once we've got this version of the basic formula happening, we can sub in any value for x and be able to figure out y, or even be able to sub in any value of y and work backwards to find what x is. So this is a really handy version of the f version of the uh, of the formula if we can get that far. Now, how did we get that far? By using a pair of values to figure out what k has to have has to be. All right, now then when we sub in a third value, I said before that we can spot, we should be able to spot a pair of values that are uh, uh, spoken of together. Then I call this my third value over here. Okay, so I'm going to sub that into my improved formula here. I'm going to put, instead of an x, I'm going to put a 26 down here. And then I think you should be able to see that I'm just about to find out what y is. I replace the x with a 26. Where did I get that information from the question up here? I put that x equals 26 all the way down here. 
Okay, I subbed in that third value, and all I have to do to find y is multiply 7 by 26 on my calculator, and y equals 182. So the first time you see that, that's pretty ugly, but um, as you see if more and more examples, you'll notice that we go through the same process uh, from the very beginning all the way through to the end. We sub in a pair of values, we solve that to find k, we improve the formula, by replacing the k with the actual value of it now and then we sub in that third value to find our final answer. So um, it's tempting to try and guess or guess, uh, guess and check um, trial and error that sort of thing to find our numbers on these. Uh, we, we, it's actually less work to do each step at a time and to kind of memorize this process and show all your working because a lot of the value of the question you get in these in these uh, questions in exams are to do with whether you can set your work out properly. All right, let's have a look at another example. This one's from real life here, like I, ex I described before. Driving time, t, we're going to call it, t for time, is proportional to the distance, d, traveled. Notice how we've assigned a letter to each of these two ideas before we've even started. Peter drives for eight hours and travels 548 kilometers. For how long must he drive in order to travel 959 kilometers? Okay, so decent question. Assuming he drives at the same rate, of course, he doesn't speed up or slow down there. Let's uh, assume a constant average speed there. Okay, the steps. Assign a letter to each variable. Now driving time, T, has been assigned and D for distance has been assigned there. Write down the basic formula. Now, we know it's going to be in the format of y equaling k lots of x here, but we've got t's and we've got d's. Now, one good question we have at this stage is, should I put t equals kd? I could have t equals k times d here, or I could have d equals k times t. Now, they're equally valid there, I suppose. But what I like to do is I, f I have a look through the question and I see which, which uh, letter, I try and answer the question, which letter am I trying to find out in the end? Can you see this? For how long must I drive? That's a time question, isn't it? So I'm actually asked to find the T in the end of this question. So I'm going to write it out so that the thing I'm trying to find is on its own on the left hand side. So that's that's my, made my decision for me. I look through the question and it's handy, it makes a, it's, it saves me a bit of time to uh, put the letter that I'm trying to find out, uh, have that as the subject of the formula, the, the letter that's out the front of that. Okay, so I'm going to choose to uh, write this out as T equals KD. Uh, all right, so we're going to sub in the pair of values. Can you see the pair of values that is mentioned in the same phrase in the question? Peter drives for eight hours and travels 548 kilometers. That's sort of spoken about together there, isn't it? The eight and the 548. And this is going to be our third value later on, the one that's mentioned as a separate idea. So we're going to sub that in. The time, the T given to us was eight and the D for distance was um, 548. I'm going to solve that to find k. Now, what's the 548 doing to the k? It's multiplying. We're going to divide both sides by 548, hopefully. Yep. I'm going to do that on both sides. On this right-hand side, it'll cancel each other out. On this left-hand side, we're going to just write that as a fraction. So we can say 8 over 548 equals k. As I turn it around to put k on the left hand side, I could also type it into my calculator using the fraction button and it will simplify it for me. k equals 2 over 137. Not a big deal, but you may as well simplify it as you go. So we've found a value for k. Can you remember the next step we do here? Once we've found the value of k, we can improve the formula by subbing in k and replacing k in the original basic formula with the value that we found that it had for this particular question. All right, so we've got t equals, instead of t equals kd, we've got t equals 2 over 137, lots of d. Now our last step is to sub in our third value. This is the number that's mentioned off to the side as the last thing, 959 kilometers. It's a D for distance, and it's going to go in there and replace our D. 
All right, so we'll multiply it by 959 instead of D, and we'll get 14. Now, T was in hours, so we've just figured out that Peter must drive 14 hours in order to travel 959 kilometres. So I like these questions because there's a lot of maths involved, but it's the same process each time, really. Different values and different uh, sort of um, amounts, but still. So this time, though, we found out how, much a how long a person had to drive for, for how long a person must drive to cover a certain distance, which is pretty handy. I mean, based in, in here is, a, is an average speed per hour and that sort of thing. We could kind of figure it out on that basis. But if we're asked in the, in the way of direct variation, this is the way they're expecting us to set it out and there'll be mark rewards for you to do, do it properly. Okay, this one we'll have to read carefully. Don't skip over the first sentence here because, um, can you see, we've got m varying this time not just uh, as n, got n varying as the square, sorry, m varying as the square of n, so careful with that. So normally we assign a letter to each variable, this one's got its own letters so we won't have to worry. Write the basic formula, now the basic formula usually is y equals kx, but I think seeing we've got a square of here, we're kind of comparing it instead to kx squared, it was on a previous slide, but yeah, we've got to uh, make sure we have that squared bit there, otherwise we're not going to get it right. We've got m equals uh, kn squared. m's out the front and we want to find m as well, which is very helpful. Sub in the pair of values. Can you spot the pair of values that we were mentioned together in the question? 144 happens when n is 6, so that's a nice pair of values. We're going to put that in the right spots there. 144 under the m and n, where, uh, sorry, 6 where the n is. We're going to have to square that 6 though and be careful with it and when we find uh, k we're going to have to divide this tide by 36 on both sides. We've seen enough of those for you to get the hang of it I'm sure. It would cancel out on that right hand side and leave us with 144 divided by 36 which is, goes in 4 times. So k is 4. Next step is to replace the k with a 4 in the basic formula to improve the formula. Still got the n squared there, but we've got a 4 now. Our last bit is to sub our final value in. Can you see the third value at the end of the question there? n equals 5. We'll sub that in and we get 4 lots of 5 squared. 5 squared is 25. 4 lots of 25 is 100. So the only difference there really, not a lot of difference uh, except we our basic formula there needs to imp uh, include that square indication that came in the question. Read the ca question nice and slowly before you start. Alright, just to sum up, we found we saw that direct variation was one in which uh, either one thing goes up and the other thing goes up, or alternatively, if one thing goes down, the other thing goes down. It's kind of like the two variables are heading in the same direction for direct variation. We saw that uh, these are our basic formulas. We have uh, A equals KB or Y equals KX is another common way of saying it. And uh, if we if the question has a square of in it, we have to adjust that way. And a cube, sometimes there's a, a square root uh, happening, and that uh, has its own direct variation. If a varies as the square root of b, we will have a equals k square root b sometimes, but that doesn't come up all that often. All right. And uh, these are our steps. We assign a letter to each variable. We didn't actually end up seeing that in this uh, in this video. These video examples we went through, but it's uh, often the case. We have to assign a letter to each variable. We'll see it in the next one. Write the basic formula. Sub in a pair of values. We did a bit of solving. It wasn't a hard solution. It was one step equation there. Once we found k, we improved the basic formula and that allowed us to just sub in that third value. So mathematically speaking, it's not that difficult, but it's tough because there's quite a process involved. There's six steps and we have to keep our wits about us and read carefully and uh, think about it. So set your work out nice and carefully and I'm hoping you're going to have some good success on those questions. Thanks for listening. PeterBlakeMath.com. We'll see you next time for inverse variation.